Okay. One o'clock. We're going to start right now. Okay, we ask brothers to uncover your heads. Sisters, cover your heads. We're going to face the rules and open up. Kids, be quiet. Kids, be quiet. Let us pray. Our Father, our Father which art in heaven. Our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. That will be done. That will be done. In earth. In earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he is good. For he is good. His mercy endures forever. And his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. For he is good. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. And his mercy endures forever. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. The Holy One of Israel. The Holy One of Israel. The King of Kings. The King of Kings. And Lord of Lords. And Lord of Lords. Lord. Amen. Amen. Your glorifying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast not, without, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I am the bread of life. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. We read 1 Corinthians 5, verses 6 through 8. Also John 6, 48 and 63. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Testing, one, two, testing, one, two. Testing, one. God is going up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises unto our King, sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth, sing ye praises with understanding. God reigneth over the heathen, God sitteth upon the thrones of his holiness. The princes of the people are gathered together, even the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong unto God, he is greatly exalted. Worship the Lord and praise. Worship the Lord. And magnify, worship the Lord, and praise. Come on, y'all, worship the Lord, and magnify. Worship the Lord, and praise. Worship the Lord. Magnify, magnify his, his name, worship. 
worship the Lord, yes. Worship the Lord. And praise. And praise his holy name. Worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. And magnify. And magnify his name. Come on. Worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. And praise. And praise his holy name. Worship the Lord now. Worship the Lord. And magnify. And magnify. Worship the, Lord. Worship the Lord and praise and praise his holy name. Worship the Lord now. Worship the Lord and magnify, and magnify his name. Make a joyful noise, all you people. Come on. Sing a song to the Lord. Yes. For his goodness of his mercy. Sing a song. Worship the Lord now. Worship the Lord and praise. And praise His holy name. Worship the Lord. Worship the Lord and magnify, and magnify His name. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people! Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. The Lord Most High is terrible. He is a great King over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. He shall choose our inheritance for us. The excellency of Jacob, whom he loved, Selah. Father, we bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. You are high and Oh, yes, you are. Lift it up, yeah. Magnificent. You are high and Hallelujah. Lift it up, yeah. Oh. You are high and mm. Lift it up, yeah. You are high and Oh, yes, you are. are.
Testing. Test one. strengthen him with thy girdle and I will commit thy government into his hand and he shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah and the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulder so he shall open and none shall shut and he shall shut and none shall open and I will fasten him as a nail in a sure place and he shall be for a glorious throne to his father's house Said the Lord of hosts, shall the nail that is fastened in the sure place be removed and be cut down and fall, and the burden that was upon it shall be cut off, for the Lord has spoken. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. In Jesus' name.
Passing. Tessie.
Testing, testing, testing. One, two. Oh, yeah. Testing, one, two. Testing. All right. All right, choir. So it's, what if God, what if God, what if God, what if God? Let's do it one time, okay? One, two, three. What if God? Do it again. On three. Let's go. One, two, three. What if God? Let's go. One, two, three. What if God is unhappy with our praise? What if he is not pleased with the words we say? What if he takes away his love and his spirit from us? with our praise. What if God is unhappy with the way we live? What if he is not pleased with the way we give? What if he takes away his love and his spirits from us? All right, get a quiet another hand. Praise the Lord. That's, a, that's an example of what the preacher would say. Hey, you felt the spirit on that, didn't you? Yes, sir. And praise the most high God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and peace to everybody that's here in the name of Jesus, everybody on the Internet. On the phone line, we got people listening, tuning in all over. Eventually, we're going to have to ex expand here, do something. We've been worried, we're going all these other places, which that's what the Lord said. The Lord said, go forth and preach the gospel. So that's what we focus on. But uh, as you see, we're going to need some space pretty soon. We've been needing space. We just be keep putting it off. And... Uh, 
we got to work out some things in L.A. and Philly, but we're going to be looking to do something here pretty soon. <laughs> Lord's will. So we welcome everybody that's tuning in on this first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And, uh, you know, to the world, it's just another hump day. That's the way the world look at it. But to us, it's a holy day. And that just show you that the Lord is really turning his people back to him. Like he said in Deuteronomy 30, after you have been blessed, we was in the land for really a, 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 a moment in the big spectrum. After you have been blessed and then the curse has set in on you. And we've been cursed, seem like forever. Born in captivity in every, every generation. But he said, after the blessing and the curse, which he pointed out back then, and you start to call it to mind among the nations where you scatter that, that you turn back to him and start obeying his commands that he commanded us back then in the Bible. Because that's what got us in trouble after all. And that show you that's exactly what's taking place. Because we're doing this all over. We not, I mean, we supposed to be at work or doing whatever we do on a Wednesday afternoon. Except we know what the Lord is saying in the scripture. So we're here to, to kick off the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which of course started with the Passover yesterday night. And that was, uh, you know, Monday night. Thank you. And now it's a continuation with the first day of unleavened bread. And the, the lesson that we had on the Passover, because that's the beginning. This is a new beginning for us. It was free from sin, passed over by the Lamb. Because that's really what got us free. There would be no Feast of Unleavened Bread if it's not for the Passover. And that just shows you the Lord did what he had to do. It shows you the Lord's grace in the first place. Because if without the people talk about grace, look, the Lord's grace is like it just started in the New Testament. The Lord's grace is all over the Old Testament. Without his grace, we wouldn't be here today. Without his grace on the Passover, right. passing over the sins of his people, it made it possible for them to depart the next day on the first day of unleavened bread. So it starts with the Passover. See, the Passover, if you get killed, ain't no need to worry about eating no bread. The Passover spared us from death. But now we're on the unleavened bread. What does that do? That shows you how to live. See, the Lord did not free Israel from slavery in Egypt so they could just go on about their business and have a happy life, so to speak. He freed them by way of the Passover lamb so they could serve him. And that goes for us individually. The Lord don't get you out of the mess that you in in your life so you could go ahead and do what you want to do or keep getting some more mess. A lot of times people will come to the Lord. They'll say, well, you know, they get jammed up, get in a bad situation, because sometimes some of us won't seek the Lord until that happens. You won't even care about the Lord until you get jammed up, and the Lord know that. So he'll put you in a situation where you don't have no choice but to call on him. And you'll call on him, and one of the things that people say, I don't even have to know you. I know you say, Lord, if you get me out of this, whew. If you get me out of this, I'm going to do right. And that's exactly what the Lord wants. That's why he gets you out. That's why he got Israel out of Egypt. That's why when you repent and get baptized, he got you out of the past. Now you got to walk with him. And that's what the unleavened bread signifies. From Jesus, the Passover lamb, to the unleavened bread of life. Because you got spared from death, and once that happened, he showed you how you need to live. You got to live a certain way. It's not like you come to Jesus, who is the Passover lamb, and get saved and do what you want to do. That's what people misunderstand. 
They think you come to Jesus, you just presto save. You don't have to do nothing. That's the worst lie I've been told. Couldn't be further from the truth. That's why you got unleavened bread. It all go together. The Lord is telling you a magnificent story. All you got to do is pay attention to it. So we're going to get into it. We're going to read a few scriptures. And uh, then we're going to get into the physical food that's been prepared. Hebrews 11. But this is the first day. The feast lasts seven days. And every day is a feast day, brothers and sisters, of the seven days. Only today is a Sabbath day. And then next Tuesday, the seventh day, is Sabbath days where you must have a holy gathering. But all the days are feasts, the whole seven days. That's why if you look at the bottom of your lesson, everybody should have a handout. You see, we even give you something to read each day because you need to be mindful that the whole day is the feast. And starting last night, which was the beginning of today, you don't eat no leavened bread for seven days. And it'll end next Tuesday night. We'll be here Tuesday afternoon, and when the sun go down, that'll be the end of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. But so you, we need to be mindful, because, and, and that's in life, we need to be mindful that we serve as a God, we got to walk with him and avoid sin, because that's what the leavening stands for. Sin or anything contrary to God, period. That's what it stands for. Nothing wrong with leavening in itself. We know that because we would never eat it then, right? right? But you get rid of it. We got it out of our houses because it, the Lord has given you a great mess. See, when the Lord gives you something, it has great meaning and significance, and you can learn how to please him because we're trying to get life. We're trying to get eternal life. When man gives you something, it don't mean nothing. What they're going to be doing Friday, Good Friday, read it in the Bible. You can't read it. Matter of fact, it's going to be a bad Friday where they keep fumbling around with the Lord. Right. Easter, the Lord didn't tell you to recognize that. He couldn't have been in the grave from Friday evening because that's what they say. They lied and said it was a Friday evening to a Sunday morning. Jesus said he would rise after three days and three nights. And you can't come close to that from Friday evening to Sunday morning. That show you, if you pay attention to what the Lord is saying, you getting enlightened on how he's saving you. If you listen to man, you're doing some folly that's leading you to death. So Hebrews 11 and verse 24, I like to start sometime in the New Testament because people that say they believe in Jesus in the New Testament, they done away with all this. Say, oh, they got nailed to the cross. We don't have to do that Passover. None of that stuff is no good. All we need is faith now. See, you had to do that little stuff back then but now once Jesus came all we need is faith that's all we ever needed brothers and sisters the question is what you got faith in see everybody doing something they're going to be doing something Friday recognizing something recognizing something Sunday everybody going to be dressed up like we we kind of the kids came in first I was about to uh wonder what they was doing taking so long but then when they marched in that looked real nice so I said okay good thing I was just kept quiet but, hey, they had on, they look real nice with the outfits they had on. See, if you're going to come before the Lord and please the Lord, this is the time you do it. These are the days the Lord gave you to recognize. They're going to be doing all that Sunday. So my point is, if you're going to be calling yourself worshiping God, you might as well do what he's telling you to do in the Bible. Because yeah. you're doing something. They say, oh, y'all doing those works. You doing those works. I see you hunting for Easter eggs. Right. I see you looking for a good Christmas tree. You doing something too. So, we, so what you do shows what you have faith in, brothers and sisters. Either you're going to have faith in the God of this Bible, follow what's in the Bible like we're going to read, or you having faith in a false God, which is not going to get you nowhere. Hebrews 11 and 24 from Jesus, the Passover lamb, that's where it started, to the unleavened bread of life. That's where we at now. Go ahead. Hebrews 11 and 24. Read it. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Oh, you mean Moses had some faith way back then, didn't he? Mm -hmm. 
in the Old Testament. By faith, Moses, when he was coming to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. So don't let them tell you faith is just something in the New Testament. All we need is faith. Now, all you ever needed was faith. But you show your faith by your works. We here today by faith. Some people, some people, jobs don't want to take off. It's faith when you said, I'm going to take off anyway. Like, I had to show some faith. Yeah, when I was driving a truck, it wasn't nothing to me. They used to argue with me. Take, take me, you know, where you got to say something to headquarters. Where they at? I tell them. I won't be there. I won't be there on the high Sabbath days. Then I got, I got all the Gentiles at my job straight. They knew I wasn't going to be there. The management, everybody. Come get a brother boss, he tried, to, he tried to overrule it. I said, yeah, you know, I'm going to be off on these certain days. He said, oh, well, I got to check on that. Well, do what you got to do, man. Then he check on it. Then he come back and say, they denied you. I said, they did? Okay. Man, I'm walking out the office. I don't care. I'm finna go to work. And I ain't say nothing to him, but this is what I'm thinking to myself. Right. We'll see. I won't be. He, was, he thought I'm going to argue with him. Look, it ain't even nothing to talk about. Because I got some faith. I'm not going to be here. I didn't even tell him that. I'm walking out the door. He said, wait a minute, wait a minute. What you been doing? I turned around and said, I've been getting them off. But, you know, whatever. He said, well, let me check again. Whatever. <laughs> I walk out, go to work. The day I get there, I did a courtesy call. I said, yeah, I ain't going to be here. It's the high Sabbath day. I won't be here today. He said, why, why not? I said, Andy, no. That's what I said, Andy, no. But he, because he never said nothing else. I guess he's going to test the water, see if I'm going to be scared. Man, you don't know the God of the Bible. But that's faith. That's faith. That's why we're here today, by faith. So by faith, right here, it said Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, mm. choosing what, 25? Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Go ahead. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. Uh-huh. For he had respect unto the recompense of the, of the reward. You see what Moses chose? He chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. See, we have to make sacrifices. Moses did. He could have been rich and the king of Egypt, but no, he, he gave that up. And it said, esteeming the reproach of Christ. See, you get dislike, you get reproach for obeying God. But that's okay. We know what we're striving for. Esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. See, we worried about some treasures in, in America instead of the reproaches of Christ. Because we're going to get the reward in the end. But go ahead, 27. What else he did by faith? All this was faith, and it's referring, brothers and sisters, to the Old Testament. So they lie when they say, oh, they had to do works back there. We don't need the Old Testament. All we need is faith. All you ever needed was faith. Go ahead, 27. By faith he forsook Egypt, uh -huh. not fearing the wrath of the king. Go ahead. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. That's right. He, he took off and left Egypt. But last but not least, go ahead, 28. Through faith, he kept the Passover. Through faith, he kept the Passover. Through faith. So it's all about, it's always been about faith, brother and sister. But your actions show what you have faith in. So we can ask people nowadays, do you have the same faith that Moses had in Jesus as the Passover? Because that's who the Passover represents. It's clear in our Bibles. It's about Jesus. All of us about Jesus. The, pie, the lamb, the bread, everything. Because you getting, you listening to what he's giving. Through faith, he kept the Passover. That's what we just did through faith. And today we, by faith, keeping the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Through faith, he kept the Passover. Go ahead. And the sprinkling of blood. Uh-huh. Lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. Notice, it was important to have the right kind of faith, too, because lest he that destroyed the firstborn 
should test them. In other words, if you don't have this faith and show it with your works, it's, 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 it's a punishment at the end. Moses and whoever didn't have faith in the Passover, they would have died. Let's show you how serious this is. Let's go back to reading when it started, Exodus 12. But we see keeping the Passover and this feast that we keeping, what is it? It's an exhibition of faith, brothers and sisters. And it never was done away with. That's the lie that's been told. We had a lesson recently. The law, the law of God, holy, just, is still good. It's still good. It's holy. Can't get changed. These are holy days. Today is a holy day. And it's set up to honor the God of the creation, even Jesus. Hebrew, I mean, uh, Exodus 12 and 11. Exodus 12 and pick it up at 11 because we're taking it from where it started. See, this is all at the beginning. That's why it happens at the beginning of the year. This is the beginning of God's plan for saving us. First thing he got to do, he got to spare you because you're not no good. You're not worthy to be spared. So he got to pass you over. But once he passed you over, you walk with him. You eat unleavened bread immediately. 12 and 11. Go ahead. And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Uh -huh. Ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. See, on the night of the Passover, you had to kill that lamb and eat it, get under the blood of it. With your loins girded, shoes on your feet, your staff in your hand, you had to eat it in haste. It's the Lord's Passover, that's whose it is. Go ahead, 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, uh -huh. both man and beast. Go ahead. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. See, the Lord said, I'm the boss around here. I've just got to let them know now. They have forgotten who run it. I'm going to come through Egypt. I'm going to kill all the firstborn man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I'm going to execute just, I am the Lord. Go ahead, 13. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. See, the blood of Jesus back here, this represents Jesus. The Lord didn't just give us this for something for, to do back then. No, oh, it's permanent. It has great significance to the end of time and beyond. Go ahead. And when I see... And when I see the blood. And I when I see the blood, because that's what's saving you. You have faith in the blood of Jesus right here. People want to talk about all oh, the blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, but you're going to do away with this that honors the blood of Jesus. You're going to do away with the feast that show you how to serve Jesus. Go ahead. I will pass over you. Uh -huh, will, that's what it means, just to get passed over, to get spared. See, again, you know the significance of the Passover when somebody next to you, around you, is dying. And you get passed over. You say, yeah, I like that. It really means something. And that's what it's showing you, even down to the end. He said, and when I see the blood, the blood going to be a token on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Well, we don't put no lamb's blood over our doorposts and all of that no more. But we get, that's why we get baptized in the name of Jesus. It's the same scenario. Mm -hmm. You recognize in the blood. I, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague, God bringing the plague now, shall not be upon you to destroy you when I do what? When I smite the land of Egypt. Verse 14. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. This is still the Passover. We ain't got to what we're doing today, but go ahead. And ye shall keep it a feast for the Lord throughout your generation. You shall keep it a feast to the Lord. See, we go to the pastor's anniversary, the first lady's anniversary, the women's retreat. We do some of everything except honor the Lord in church. Right. Why can't we do this? We can make up new stuff. Why can't we follow the old path like the Bible say? Right. This day shall be a memorial. You shall keep it a feast to the Lord. How long? Throughout your generations. Go ahead. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. It's meant to be kept permanently. That's why we're doing it. Now, once you come out of the Passover, you go right into this. Go ahead. Seven days shall you eat unleavened bread. Immediately after you got spared by the Passover lamb, you got to eat unleavened bread. 
Because he saved you so you can walk with him now. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Go ahead. Even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your houses. And the first day you put away leavening out of your houses. So we had that done by last night. Because this is the first day. We started last night, so all the leavening should have been gone. And we know what leavening is. It's the traditional bread that we eat, which includes other forms of leavening, cookies, cakes, crackers, all the bread stuff, because it's all about bread. Now, somebody got confused because they were saying, well, what about the cake mixes and stuff like that? Because we don't, you know, if it's like, like, it, it, like you got yeast in some of everything. It's not per se the agent. It's the agent when it's affecting the bread. Right. So you got yeast in bread, in beer, you got yeast in soup. That's not what he's dealing with, because it's not dealing with bread. But now somebody's asking me about cake mix. I said, yeah, I get rid of cake mixes, because it say cake. And it's already mixed. All you got to do is pour. You got some cupcake mix, some, some, some uh, cookie mix. Hey, even if you look at the box, that's like you look at this box. This is a box of unleavened bread. Okay, you look at a pancake Mix box. It got big fluffy pancakes on there. I'm not leaving that in my house. Right. Uh-uh. Because all you got to do, because you definitely couldn't eat it during that week, and all you got to do is put it in the skillet, put some water in it, and you're going to have some pancakes, which you can't have. So don't get confused. But any, any like yeast by itself, yeast by itself is not going to, you know, that can go in some of anything. So it's not going to turn into bread on its own. You got to put it in the flour and do all that stuff with it. So, but this is what began right after the Passover and the Lord made it happen for Israel because they wasn't even prepared to do it. Just like sometimes you'll end up trying to do something wrong and the Lord will make you do right. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day unto the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. Look at this. Seven days you got to eat unleavened bread. You got to complete the whole week of unleavened bread. And people get, 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 get bothered when you say, look, we do this. It's still good today. Oh, I don't know. Why you got to do that? It's in the Bible. And they get bothered and frustrated. Like I have had people say, what y'all doing? Oh, you got to get the leavening out your house. Oh, like it's just like they got tired just listening to me. <laughs> Woo, le Woo. Yeah, I ain't got time for that thing. I just believe in Jesus. But you got time to go hunt for a Christmas tree. Find the perfect one. Put it on your trunk. Carry it home. Right. So what do you have faith in? Some man told you or some God is telling you in the Holy Bible. Seven days you got to eat unleavened bread. So this piece, I like to say, it got two components, brothers and sisters. The two components is you must eat unleavened bread. Back when I first started doing it 30-some years ago, I just knew I wasn't trying to eat no leavening. I didn't understand probably the first year that I was supposed to eat unleavened bread. So I was avoiding leavening, but I wasn't necessarily eating unleavened bread. But that's the two components. You must eat unleavened bread for seven days. So you want to have some each day. And you avoid eating leavening, as he said here. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. Even the first day you're going to put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. It was that serious. Because God said, I'm teaching you how to serve me. If you don't want to learn, I'm going to kill you. 16. And in the first day, there should be a holy convocation. That is today. That's why we're here today. The first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. See, every day of Unleavened Bread of the whole seven, they are not Sabbath days. And don't require holy convocations. But, you, but, but we can get together among ourselves and still feast. But only the first day and the last day are Sabbath days where you take off work. See, you can work tomorrow, the second day of unleavened bread, but it's still a feast. But you can work and handle your business. Mm -hmm. So only the first day and the seventh day are Sabbath days, which require 
holy convocations and no work. Only work we can do, he's going to tell you right now, is what we're doing. Because it takes work to do this. But this okay. We honor the Lord. We feast unto the Lord. The first day there should be a holy convocation. And what else? And then the seventh day there should be a holy convocation. That's, that's next Tuesday. Go ahead. No manner of work shall be done in them. See, it's, they Sabbath. So you don't work on the Sabbath. Today is a Sabbath. That's why we took off those that got understanding that were able. No man of work shall be done in them, but he's going to give you the loophole, the exclusion. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Save that which every man must eat, uh -huh. that only may be done of you. Except, that's what save means, except cooking, and et cetera. Because normally you don't do that on, on, this, on the Sabbath day. We don't do that on the seventh day, Sabbath. But on these high Sabbaths, that's the exclusion. Only one that's not excluded is the atonement because you ain't no need, no need to cook because ain't, you ain't even eating. Right. 17. And ye shall observe the Feast of Unleavened Bread. See, this is it. The Feast of Unleavened Bread. This is in the Bible for a reason, brothers and sisters. Why are we going to throw away everything that God is saying in the Holy Bible and think it's okay to do Good Friday and Easter and Christ, all this stuff that man made up? And you think you are serving a God. Right. No, you serving man and ultimately you serving Satan. Mm -hmm. So what did he say? Read it again. And ye shall observe the feast of unleavened bread. For in this self same day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. See, that's the day they left Egypt. It started today. See, the Passover broke Pharaoh's and the Egyptians back. Mm -hmm. And they got together and they left the following day on unleavened bread. So the journey began. But it's a journey with your God. See, they got great spiritual application because that's how life is. You, you've been in all kind of drama, doing this, doing wrong, and your journey began when you come to the Lord. You come to the Passover land. Now you got to walk with him from then on. Right. So that journey with the Lord was beginning. That's all life is about. Hopefully you get to where you need to be with the Lord. He said, because in this selfsame day, have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt? Go ahead. Therefore shall ye observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. We keep running into forever too. Right. Not till when Jesus come. And Jesus didn't change nothing. Jesus fell in line with this because he gave it. He was back here giving it. It's about him. Either you're going to honor Jesus in the Bible or you honoring a false God. 18. And the first month on the 14th day of the month that even ye shall eat unleavened bread until the one and 20th day of the month at even. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses. Uh -huh. For whosoever eateth that which is leaven, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel. See, that's how serious it was. So that's why you even get all the leavening out. Because you don't want to make no mistake and eat some. You know, I, I remember years ago when I was still at the Israel of God in Chicago. I was talking to Brother Daniel about Brother Ray, you being me and him. We was working on the extension. This had to be like in 93, building the, the, the new extension because more people was coming. And as and soon as the Feast of Unleavened Bread started, we had celebrated the feast at night because he was doing it in the evening like Brother Daniel still do them in the evening. And maybe the second day or whatever, we sitting at this restaurant and right away, I'm talking about ordering some pancakes. That's so you got to be on this. I said, yeah, we want, I want this. I want some pancakes. Ready you been telling the way. They don't want no pancakes. <laughs> I'm about to argue with this dude. Like, I do want some pancakes. Don't listen to him. He said, he don't want no pancakes. <laughs> He's like, I'm like, this dude is tripping. And then he kept on saying, he don't want no pancakes. Finally, then it ding, ding, ding. I was like, oh, goodness. <laughs> no, nah, I don't want no pancakes. <laughs> I'm thinking he tripping. No, nah, I'm tripping. So that showed you how you got to be on top of it. And it's serious because he said, you get it all out your houses, whosoever eateth that which is leaven. See, this bread that we got here, matzos, and you can make some, some other type of bread. You can even make unleavened cakes. It's not leaven. It haven't been altered. Haven't had the addition put in it to change the whole structure of it. Mm -hmm. 
Whosoever eateth that which is leavened, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel. Notice he said, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. So you got some Hebrews out here, they want to kill all the strangers. The strangers don't have nothing to do with it. I know they mad because, yeah, the Gentiles have done us bad. But, hey, that's our own fault anyway. We messed up. But the Lord always made room for the stranger because the Lord created everybody. So how are you going to say nobody could be saved but Israel and you believe in the Old Testament? Right here, he including the strange, isn't he? Go ahead, verse 20. Ye shall eat nothing leavened and all your habitations. Nothing so leavened. You shall eat nothing leavened. And it's referring to bread. But it's all kind of types of bread. That's why he said all leavened because you got cakes. You don't call it bread. It's still bread. It's cake. Cookies, crackers, you shall eat nothing leavened. Go ahead. And all your habitations shall you eat unleavened bread. And you have to eat unleavened bread for this time. But it's a great meaning in here. Now you're learning how to live right. Get rid of all the additives and live the right way. What verse you just read? 20? Yes, sir. Go ahead and uh, skip to verse uh, 27. Go ahead. That ye shall say, it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt uh -huh. when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses. And the people bowed their head and worshiped. And the children of Israel went away and did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. Uh -huh. so, so did they. And it came to pass. I skipped, so I, I messed that up. Really, it should have been 37. I was wondering what was going on. But anyway, that's going back into the Passover. I want to get past it. Verse 37 is what I want. I was looking at the hand. Now, I typed that wrong. Go ahead. Verse 37. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramesses and Succoth, uh -huh. about 600,000 on foot that were men, uh -huh. beside children. Go ahead. And a mixed multitude went up also with them. See, it was other people besides Israel. But this when they left, and they left on the first day of unleavened bread. The Lord broke Pharaoh's back on the Passover. They got themselves together, over a million people, and they left. In one day, the day after the Passover, they left on unleavened bread, and they started journeying. It says 600,000 on foot that were men besides children. You know if you got that many men, hey, you got over a million people all together. Because you count women, women and children. But go ahead. And the mixed multitude left with them. So it wasn't just Israel. Other people were welcome because whoever wanted to serve God accordingly, it's welcome. Go ahead. And flocks and herds, even very much cattle. 39. And they baked unleavened cakes of the dough which they brought forth out of Egypt. Uh -huh. For it was not leavened. Wait a minute. And it, it happened automatically. The Lord made it happen. They had to leave so quick and they wanted something to eat. They end up baking unleavened cakes. Because, you know, back in the day, to leaven the bread took a little longer process than it do. You could do a little quick. It's still a little process now, but it took a little longer. They, they would have had to wait and let it leaven, so, but they didn't do it. They was rushing up out of there, and they say, and they baked unleavened cakes of the dough which they brought forth out of Egypt. For it was not leavened. See, it hadn't went through the process. Go ahead. Because they were thrust out of Egypt. And that's the reason. They was in a hurry. Because usually, you know, even this, the uh, directions tell you, you put the yeast in the dough or whatever, and you let it sit a little bit, and it it had changed the whole construct. But go ahead. And could not tarry. Neither had they prepared for themselves any victory. Uh-huh. Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. Uh-huh. And it came to pass... At the end of the 430 years, even the self-same day it came to pass that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. See, now they're getting delivered. On the first day of unleavened bread, a new life with the Lord. See, but they were forced to eat unleavened cakes because that's, that's symbolic of your new journey with the Lord now. Mm -hmm. But it took, it started with the Passover lamb. You wouldn't have this journey if it wasn't for the Passover lamb. That kicked it off. Go ahead, 42. It is a night to be much observed uh -huh. unto the Lord for bringing them out from the land of Egypt. Uh -huh. This is that night of the Lord to be observed of all the children of Israel in their generations. That's right. 
And that started last night. That's why we made sure we had the leavening out by last night. Most of us do it by the Passover, but technically, you, you know, you got to the first day of unleavened bread to get it out. You just have to eat unleavened bread with the Passover. But the leavening have to be out on the first day of unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. Now, let's skip over to the 13th chapter, Exodus 13 and 3. Exodus 13 and 3. Because now we into it. You got passed over by the lamb, which is none other than Jesus. Now you eating the bread that he wants you to eat, which is teaching you, you got to walk with him. You got to serve the Lord. This in itself, if you understand this feast of unleavened bread, none of these people walking around would not be saying, you could serve the Lord your way and I could serve him my way. Right. Could they do that here? Mm -mm. Everybody had to be operating with this unleavened bread, didn't he? Mm -hmm. See, the Lord don't play that. Go ahead, 13 and 3. And Moses said unto the people, Remember this day in which he came out from Egypt out of the house of bondage. Out of the house of bondage. They got delivered from slavery. You say, well, we're not getting delivered from slavery. Well, we're going to get delivered from physical slavery as well. Jesus is going to do that when he comes. But in the meantime, you're getting delivered from spiritual slavery. People getting delivered. That's what we're preaching for because people are in bondage to sin. That's why the title on the Passover was free, free from sin, free on, you know, on the path, free from sin, passed over by the lamb because we're getting free from sin. See, the Lord is showing you all kind of methods on how he is saving you. He used a physical to point to something spiritual. So Moses said, remember this day in which he came forth out of the house of bondage. For what? For by strength of hand, the Lord brought you out from this place. Uh-huh. There shall no leavened bread be eaten. They keep saying it. There shall no leavened bread be eaten. And they keep have to tell people, it is about bread. It's all about bread. That's why even though I don't drink beer, but I wouldn't have no problem if I was still drinking beer, drinking it. Now that I understand, it's about bread, even though, you know, that has leaven in it. And for people who think beer drinking is a sin, hey, that's not biblical. Jesus drank. But even though beer has yeast in it, it has nothing to do. It's not a bread form. would never be bread. So that's not what he's talking about. He is talking about leavened bread. He said, there shall no leavened bread be eaten. Read verse 4. This day came ye out in the month of a, a month of beer. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Keep reading. Just keep reading on through. And it shall be when the Lord shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, which he swear unto thy fathers to give thee. See, they was on their way now. Go ahead. A land flowing with milk and honey. What should you do? That thou shalt keep this service in this month. See, you keep this service in this month. And we still doing it now because for disobedience we got kicked out, but we hoping to go back. Verse 6. Seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread. Uh-huh. And in the seventh day shall be a feast to the Lord. Here we go again. You do it for seven days. Start off with a, with, with a holy convocation on the first day. And we feasted, and we're going to conclude it next week with a holy convocation on the seventh day. And in the meantime, you still observe the, the weekly, the seventh-day Sabbath. And some people don't understand that, but we're going to be here. For instance, we have a Friday night service to honor the Sabbath. We're going to be here Friday night. Those that come, we're going to be doing a little feasting because it's still a feast. Right. It will be what? What day will Friday be? Friday during the daytime will be the uh, fourth day of the feast, during the third day of the feast, I guess. And Saturday will be the fourth day of the feast. It's still the feast, though. The Lord know every time if he said feast seven days, he was going to hit a, a seventh-day Sabbath. Mm -hmm. But you deal with it all. You still don't act like it's not the Sabbath, but you still don't have to act like it's not the feast. You could do both, like we do on both today. The day is a Sabbath, but we feasting and cooking, right? Same thing on the seventh day. That's what we do. So we'll be here. Well, I won't be here because I'll be at another class Saturday, but I'll be here Friday night, and we're going to be feasting then because the feast lasts seven days. 
you eat unleavened bread for seven days. And you climax it at the seventh day of the feast, what he said here, that will end the feast of unleavened bread. And that's next Tuesday, verse uh, seven. seven. Go ahead. Unleavened bread shall be eaten seven days. There you go again. He reiterating it. Go ahead, because you're going to, seven represent completion. You're going to complete this whole walk with God. That lets you know we got to endure to the end serving God. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And there shall and there shall no leavened bread be seen with thee. Uh huh. Neither shall there be leaven seen with thee in all thy quarters. See, no leavened bread seen with you at all. That's why you don't put it in your garage. Because it'll be seen with ye. In all your quarters, if we was in the land, hey, when nobody had no bread, that'd be something. You talking about a whole country, you didn't got rid of bread. That's why we try to let it dwindle down where you don't have, have less to throw out. But whatever you got, throw it out. It ain't going to kill you. Go ahead. And thou shalt show thy son in that day, saying, This is done because that which the Lord did unto me when I came forth out of Egypt. Uh-huh. Now you're going to remind him. You're going to rehearse this. Go ahead. And this shall be for a sign. Of oh, but it's a sign of something. It's not about the bread because you would never eat the leavened bread if it was that, right? It's like we don't never eat swine. That's permanent. That ain't a sign of nothing. That's unclean. Don't eat it, period. Right. Okay, this is a sign of something. Lord is giving you good information. Mm. Even when you serving him, even when you're having a good time, the Lord don't mind you having a good time. He wants you to recognize him and know what he's about. He gave you everything you got. So he said, it shall be for a sign unto thee. What? Upon thine hand. Uh-huh. And for a memorial between thine eyes. That what? That the Lord's law may be in thy mouth. Oh, that the Lord's law may be in thy mouth. It's really not about the bread being in your mouth. It's about the Lord's law. Be, it's teaching you, you got to eat what the Lord got for you spiritually. That the Lord's law may be in your mouth. That's what it's teaching you. Sometimes people get too caught up on the bread. I had people come to me. They said, is it okay if I eat unleavened bread all year long? I said, I'm not, but if you want to, that's. <laughs> it, it, it helped me lose weight, whatever. I, you can do it. That's what you want to do. But it's not about the bread. It's what it's pointing to. Right. That the Lord's law may be in thy mouth. Go ahead. For with a strong hand hath the Lord brought thee out of Egypt. Uh-huh. Thou shalt therefore keep this ordinance in, this, in his season from year to year. You're going to keep this ordinance in his season. This is the season for year after year. Leviticus 23. But it was introduced in action. In other words, they lived it out. He instructed them to do the Passover. Somebody died and they got passed over. And then they was rushing to get out. They end up eating unleavened cakes. So it was introduced in action. But here was the overall instructions to do it, like he just said, year to year in his season. This way it gives you all the holy days or holy occasions to honor him, to come together. You know, you got certain religions, they have what they call even, some of them call it convocation, where we have the Baptist convocation and the Church of God and Christ convocation. Why don't you do these convocations, though? Right. This is what the Lord wants you to do. 23 and 1. Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speaking to the children of Israel and saying to them. Again, we always point out who is talking. Because people want to act like, you know, we stupid. Or God is stupid. Somebody's stupid. <laughs> because they say, well, y'all do that Moses stuff. Look, Moses didn't make it up. Mm -hmm. And why would you want to ignore when God is talking here? Everybody got these Bibles and it's saying the same thing. I don't care what language you speak. It's letting you know God was literally talking to this man, Moses, telling him what to tell the people to follow. This is what it's saying. And we're going to let a preacher tell you don't need that. Now, who, do, who are you? When he talked to you, they lie and say they talked to him one Thursday evening on their couch. But they ain't even lying saying he told them this. Or told him to do away with this. Look, we, we got a record that God is talking to Moses. And this God is Jesus, one people claim to believe in. So it says, the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, 
He told Moses to tell the children of Israel what? Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, concerning the feast of the Lord. Concerning his own feast, the feast of the Lord. Don't let them tell you it's the Jews or there's something for the Christians. That's what they lie. Where the Christians do this and the Jews do this. Look, either you're going to follow the Lord or you're not. These belong to the Lord. What you call Christian is not really Christian because Christ did this. Christ ordained this. Christ is the Passover. So really, that belonged to Satan, what you call him Christian. Right. And this don't belong to the Jews. God gave it to them. It is his. So he said, Moses, you tell them concerning my feast, concerning the feast of the Lord, which you're going to do what now? Which he shall proclaim to be holy convocation. You're going to proclaim these days, these occasions to be holy convocations. What are they? Even these are my feasts. Even these are my feasts once again. Mine, God said. Go ahead. Six days shall work be done. Uh-huh. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. Uh-huh. The holy convocation. That's the weekly one. Every seventh day. Haven't changed, brothers and sisters. Didn't change to the first day. Can't read that in the Bible at all. <laughs> Every seventh day. Six days you work. Seven days is the Sabbath of rest. That's the... Constant gathering, holy convocation. Go ahead. Ye shall do no work therein. Uh huh. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. Not the Jews. That's not one for the Jews and the Christians. It's one. It's the Sabbath of the Lord. Right. And you do it everywhere. That's the weekly. But now we're getting into the yearly ones that come once a year. That's what he's gonna tell you now. For these are the feasts of the Lord. Even holy convocation, uh -huh. which he shall proclaim in their seasons. Here's the seasonal ones. And we at the beginning, the first season. The Lord started off like this because in order for you to be with God, which is what all this is coming down to, you have to, he had to save you from yourself. He had to pass you over. He was showing Israel, y'all not just automatically special and worthy. I'm going to kill the Egyptians. I could just as well be killing y'all. Y'all not that, that clean either. But you got to have faith. If you got faith in my way of saving you, which this is, God made this up. This is the Passover lamb. You will get spared. So that's the first one. Now you can start coming to me. So these are the ones in that season. What's the first one? Verse 5. And the 14th day of the first month at evening is the Lord's Passover. 14th day of the first month at evening is the Lord's Passover. That's where it all started. Go ahead. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread so unto the Lord. So those are distinct days, right? Right. One is the 14th and one is the 15th. The next day, they really distinct feasts, but they all intertwine together. Because the Passover is how you got spared from death by the Lamb. And then you start the Feast of Unleavened Bread. First 14th day of the first month at Eve is the Lord's Passover. On the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread, not to the pastor or so-and-so and the first lady and all of this, right. unto the Lord. Go ahead. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. See, he's saying it again. But we saw how it got introduced. They really did that. And what? And the first day ye shall have an holy convocation. He shall do no servile work therein. See, in the first day, you have a holy convocation. That is today. That's why we're doing this. We didn't make up this. This is what God said. We're just following his instructions. A holy gathering, no servile work, meaning that you can cook. We already saw that. And, and do this feasting. Go to Acts, the 20th chapter. And then he tell you later, we'll get to that next week. On the last, the seventh day, you have a holy convocation. But I like to get back to the New Testament because, again, all my New Testament Christians say, oh, that got done away with. Yeah, well, I read that in Leviticus, but all oh, that got done away with, it got nailed to the cross. Well, somebody should have told the, the brothers in the New Testament that. Right. Somebody should have told Paul that right here. Acts 20 and 6. Go ahead. And we sailed away from Philippi. After the days of unleavened bread. Why is he that Jesus long been dead, resurrected, and been back to heaven? Even before Paul was in the gospel, Jesus had died and resurrected and went back to heaven. Why in the world is he still talking about unleavened bread 
and he is with Christ now. If he got nailed to the cross, right? Mm -hmm. Why is he talking about it? Why is he observing it? Right. Just like he was still observing the Sabbath day because it was all still good. It's, a, it's showing you the magnificent plan of God. You honoring God. Either you're going to honor God or you're going to honor the devil. We sailed away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread. That means he specifically stayed there and evidently was observing what we observing, right? The feast of unleavened bread. We know it's seven days and all of that. See, there wasn't no new feast in the New Testament. They was doing what had been given because they understood the meaning. After the days of unleavened bread. Go ahead. And came unto them to Troas in, seven, in five days, mm -hmm. where we abode seven days. But he, he, he hung out where he was at and observed the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Because you ain't still keeping a record of something you don't think you need to do it no more. Right. You know, I, I ain't going to lie to you, but some of these man-made traditions that I haven't done in forever come, I don't even know when they come sometime. We was, well, we was in, uh, where was we at? Uh... In Pine Bluff, had a Sabbath down there. It was Christmas Eve. We was running wild. Wait, everything closed? What's going on? Why is the stores and stuff closed? They're like, man, it's Christmas. We was like, oh, man, shoot. We trying to go buy something. We ain't keeping no record of that. Don't even care. So why is Paul still talking about unleavened bread? Because he observing it. It wasn't nailed to the cross. It was not done away with. And I know these preachers know how to find Acts the 20th chapter, verse 6, because they have lied and come here and twisted Acts 20 and verse 7. Right. So I know they know where verse 6 is. They skip over that and they read verse 7. Read it. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, uh -huh. Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow. And continued his speech until midnight. Now you know the lot is being told to see this where the Sabbath chain. Now you don't read that in that verse. Of course they insert that. They add to the word which they should be careful. But they come here and get see the first day of the week. It was a, Yeah that's all. It was the first day of the week. Right. Nothing wrong with preaching on no day. It don't change the Sabbath though. But they come here and literally say he broke bread too. That don't make no sense. If you're going to eat, you probably have to break it unless you got a big mouth. <laughs> but they make something out of that that's not there, and they overlook because they say the Sabbath day, the feast day, it's got nailed to the cross. We got this new stuff. That's a lie. You haven't, if you learn the message that you're getting from the Feast of Unleavened Bread about walking with the Lord untainted, uncut, you wouldn't believe that. So they kept the feast day, the feast of unleavened bread. It was not done away with. Go to John 6, and we're going to wrap it up. <clears throat> See, we just got a few scriptures where we know exactly what we are here to observe. We don't want to worship what we know not. We want to know what we worship it. Acts, I mean, John, I'm sorry. 6 and 48. John 6 and 48. And it's all about Jesus. People talking about they believe in Jesus. They really don't. Because right. if you believed in Jesus, you would be doing this. Because Jesus ordained it. He is the Passover lamb. He gave you the bread of unleavened life, unleavened bread, which leads to life. That's what it stands for. John 6 and 48. Go ahead. I am that bread of life. Uh-huh. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. See, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. But what does that mean? Do we just eat him? No, it means we believe in him and his word. We believe in him and all that he has given us. Because he is the Passover, again, you don't even have a chance at life except for the Passover. That's why he said, I'm that bread of life. Why is he the bread of life? Because first, first and foremost, he had to die to give you the opportunity at life. Mm -hmm. Even that manna, 
He said, your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. Uh-uh. That was just the Lord teaching them something with the manna. But go ahead. Verse 50. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. See, this is the bread. Talking about himself. Go ahead. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. Oh, you really want to eat of this bread because it's going to make you live forever. Go ahead. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. See, he died. He said, the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. But when did he give his life? He gave you something to recognize when he gave it. On the Passover. That's why we ate the bread and drank the wine on the Passover, right? Right. Because that's when he did it. We recognize in this what he did. We got faith in this. You're doing something else. You don't have faith in this, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, uh -huh. saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? See, they start trying to look at it literally. How are we going to eat his flesh? That man crazy. No, it's symbolic. Go ahead. Then Jesus said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. See, in other words, you got to have faith in him. And have faith in the gift that he brought by dying. And also have faith in his words. And do what he said. Because just to say, I believe and don't do nothing, faith without works is dead. Go ahead. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. Now, he, see, they start thinking he's talking about really eating his flesh. No, he's talking about believe, have faith in his plan, and do it. Have faith in his plan and do it. That's what he's talking about. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. Go ahead. And I will raise him up at the last day. Notice you got to get resurrected to get it, though, at the last day. You're not dying and going to heaven like they didn't lie. That's another lie. That's some more leavening. All this stuff that people believe in nowadays, if they understood the Feast of Unleavened Bread, they wouldn't be eating all that leavening up. Mm -hmm. That false teaching. That's what he told. We're not going to read that today. That's what he told the, the, his disciples in uh, Matthew 16. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. And said That was their teaching, their doctrine, not the bread. See, we're not really worried about the leavened bread. It's a sign of something. Of falsehoods. We not real, that's not our concern. We're just doing that as a sign. The doctrine, the lies in the name of God is what we're concerned with. Skip over to verse 63. So that's why we eat unleavened bread. Because it is standing for us hearing the word and following God's word. Go ahead. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. See, so finally let them know, man, I ain't telling you to really eat my flesh and drink my blood. Even, even, even the Catholic Church got that messed up. They talk about the Eucharist, the Eucharist where they literally is, is, is supposed to be turning the little wafers that they eat and the, and the little juice that they drink into literally the blood of Christ. They say the priest got power to really make it the blood of Christ. Lord ain't really telling you to drink no blood. <laughs> Anyway, and to the body of Christ. No, it's symbolic. Right. He said, it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh prophet. Now, really what he's telling, I ain't really telling you to eat my arm off. That ain't going to do you no good. The flesh prophet, nothing. But what is the spirit that give life? Because this is what, this is the bread of life that we need. Go ahead. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The words that I speak unto you. They are spirit, they are life. That's what eating the unleavened bread signify, the words of God. That's why he said in Ex Exodus 13, this should be a sign that God's law may be in your mouth. But he likened it to eating here. He said he is the bread. Let's go further. Luke 22. And he started off by saying he gave his life. We're going to make sure you know when he gave his life. Because this all started with the Passover lamb. And we don't even recognize Jesus as such. Luke 22 and verse 7. 22 and 7. Go ahead. Then came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. See, it had to go down on this day. 
They called it all unleavened bread because you even ate unleavened bread with the Passover. So they just sometimes, you know, Israel will lump things together, even though we know really it was distinct days of Passover, then the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Right. Then came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. Jesus, knowing he the Passover, he let, him, let them arrest him on that day. Must be killed on that day. Go ahead. So when the evening, what happened? 14. And when the hour was come, uh -huh. he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him. See, he sat down. This was called the Last Supper, but really it was just the Passover. Right. Because this is what kicked it off. Go ahead. And he said unto them, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. See, somebody need to tell their neighbor that Jesus was celebrating the Passover before he suffered. Right. Because it represented him. He had to suffer on that day. With desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. So when he said, I am the bread of life, and, and my bread is, he, he that coming down from heaven and give his life for the world. You got to believe that. And he did that on the Passover. So he already had the celebration set up. That's how awesome God is. He didn't come up with a new celebration in Matthew. He had to celebrate. He had people recognizing his plan from day one. Right. So you just keep on flowing with. He already got you already entwined with him and his plan. You don't need no new Good Friday. You don't need no new day like Good Friday. No, he gave you the day. It's the Passover. He said, with desire, I have desired. He didn't say to eat this Good Friday dinner with you, did he? He didn't say even the Lord's Supper. With desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Before he give his life up for us. On the Passover. One more place. 1 Corinthians 5. And the choir going to come back. They might as well get it together. Come on up. Because they're going to come back and lead us into the the physical festivities. We just want to give you enough to know because without the spiritual bread, there's no need for us to be here. First Corinthians 5, and we're going to pick it up at verse 6. So it started with the Passover giving his life, and immediately... You go to eat an unleavened bread, and that signifies now you with him now. You was bought by him dying. He spared you so you can live with him now. 1 Corinthians 5 and 6. Paul understood it, even was telling the Corinthians this. Go ahead. Your glorifying is not good. Your glorying is not good. Go ahead. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? See, a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. A little leaven. That's all it takes. It's just a little bit. You put it in the dough or whatever, and it would change the whole shape and form of the bread. So this is teaching you we're going to avoid sinning against God, even what we might consider the little sins and all of that. We're going to avoid because then that catch on all of a sudden, hey, you into big sins. A little leaven, leaven the whole lump. Go ahead. Purge out therefore the old leaven. Uh huh. That ye may be a new lump. Go ahead. As ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. See what you do with the feast of unleavened bread? We purge out the old leaven. It's not about the leaven that we would never put it back in our house. But it's, it's about walking with the Lord, being new with the Lord. That's why this takes place at the new year. This is the beginning of the Lord's year. The weather's getting good. It's going to get better and better because this is the new year. Purge out therefore the old leaven. But Paul talking about what we learned in Exodus and Leviticus. It was not done away with, brothers and sisters. That's why he was keeping the Feast of Unleavened Bread in Philippi. Purge out therefore the old leaven that you may be a new lump. That means you got to get stuff contrary to God out of your life. That's what people don't understand. They want to think you just come to the Lord, you saved. No, you got to change. You got to eat unleavened bread, symbolically speaking. Right. 
Purge out the old leaven that ye may be a new lump as you are what? As ye are unleavened. As ye are unleavened. The Bible say we supposed to be unleavened. As ye are unleavened. So why is it that we got this information about the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread all over the Bible and none of our churches is telling us about it? I didn't hear this when I went to a Baptist church. We don't hear this at the average church. Why is it? Because the Lord said, beware as many false prophets teaching out here in the world. Many of them. They're not telling us how to please God so we can get into his kingdom. Purge out the old leaven that you may be a new lump as ye are unleavened. Why? Again? For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. See, that just sums it up. Christ our Passover Kick this off for us. He is sacrificed for us. Now, can't nobody tell me where he's our Good Friday man or he's the Easter bunny. <laughs> but the Bible telling you he is our Passover and you have done away with it. You doing away with Christ and the ability to get your sins passed over. But he was sacrificed for us so we can become unleavened. One more verse. So now, once he's been sacrificed for us, what do we do? And what we doing physically here as a reminder of all that God is doing for us? What do we do after the Passover? Go ahead. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Therefore, let us keep the feast. He's he, he bringing it from a spiritual application, but it came from the physical. We keeping this feast because we keeping this feast in life. You come to the Lord and you start walking with him with unleavened bread. Right. Therefore, let us keep the feast. How? Not with the old leaven. Uh-uh. Neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness. See what the leaven represent? Go ahead. But with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. And I hope you got some understanding in Jesus' name. <laughs> now, one, one, one note. Uh, if you didn't get a calendar, you can still get one. We, we got them around here. And uh, like I said, on the handout... You see at the bottom, you got scriptures for each day of the feast. So that's a reminder. Tomorrow is the second day and so forth and so on. We don't have no scriptures on there for the fourth day because we're going to be here on the fourth day or whatever our convocation is at. Should be keeping the Sabbath day and reading those scriptures. Same thing on the seventh day. But other than that, you got scriptures you can read to stay focused. We almost done. Bear with us. To stay focused on that it's still the Feast of Unleavened Bread for each day. And uh, one other thing, some people miss the Passover. If you missed the Passover, you know, uh, last night, well, night before last when we celebrated it, for legitimate reason or whatever, you couldn't make it. Some people, like I know one brother, he wasn't circumcised, but he's going to be circumcised in a few weeks, so he'd be able to keep it the second month. So if you had a reason where you was out of town or whatever and couldn't do it, that's what he talked about, unclean. We can't really deal with unclean too much because we all unclean if you want to know the truth of it. But he didn't even talk about you in a journey, you couldn't make it. We're going to be doing it the second time. Let us know. We're going to get a list up here you can sign. In uh, May, because you could do it on the 14th day of the second month, which is May 9th. I think that's a Tuesday at sundown. May 9th at sundown will be the, the time to keep the second Passover. And with that said, we're going to turn over to the choir. They're going to lead us into the, <clears throat> the physical food that we're going to enjoy to recognize the Lord and his Feast of Unleavened Bread. Testing one, two. Mic check. If it's love, it's at the table. If it's peace, it's at the table. Come on. Come on in where the table is spread. And the feast of the Lord is going.
Close out. We're gonna stand and face Jerusalem, and just remember, you're gonna be feasting at the table as soon as we close out. You, we can get to it. If you came with nothing, we got plenty, so don't worry about that. All you gotta do is go to anybody's table. It's gonna be plenty. We ain't gonna be able to eat all the food this here. Lord God, we stand before you today in the beginning of your year. After we're doing your Passover and standing before you, serving you on your day of unleavened bread, because this is a feast unto you and we celebrate you. We thank you, Lord, for giving us the understanding that today we should not be out in the world doing things of our own pleasure, but standing here before you, Lord, honoring your days of unleavened bread. And now, Lord, we thank you for this physical food that we're about to receive for the nurse in our body, Christ's sake. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. That will be done. That will be done. In earth. In earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the power and the glory and the glory forever. forever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he is good. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. And his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. For he is good. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. And his mercy endures forever. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The Holy One of Israel. The Holy One of Israel. The King of Kings. The King of Kings. And Lord of Lords. And Lord of Lords. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.